Hey guys, Ali Dameron here. In today's video, I'm going to share with you my five top tips to staying consistent with weight loss. We all know consistency is key, so tune in to learn my top five tips. If you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button to be notified anytime I post new content related to women's health, hormones, or holistic health. So when we're desiring weight loss, we all know that we have to be in a caloric deficit. And I tell my patients all the time, our caloric deficit needs to be a pretty like mild to moderate caloric deficit, nothing like huge, but we know from experience, most of us at least, that being in a caloric deficit over time, 80 to 90% of the time that's needed for weight loss is difficult. So I want to share with you what I share with my patients to kind of keep the consistency going so that you can yield the results that you want. So my number one tip is to actually do a little bit of work on the forefront of your weight loss phase or caloric deficit. And that is we have to ask ourselves kind of like if we really want this as a product of the you know, weight loss industry, living as a woman in America, there's a lot of pressure just to always want to lose weight and always feeling like you should lose weight and you should make yourself smaller and all of those things when sometimes it's just not exactly what you want. And I always tell my patients that I've been in weight loss for 17 years and I think that, you know, through that time frame of watching people either succeed at weight loss or decide not to to lose weight and myself included there are times when we are unstoppable we make our mind up about any decision in life but specifically weight loss and we are unstoppable we don't let any of the roadblocks really get in our way we find solutions we make it work and then there's other times in life when with our goals, every single thing that could get in our way does, and there's just roadblock after roadblock. And I always tell my patients that we need to actually ask ourselves, like, is this actually something that we want? Because generally, when we are resisting change, it's not bigger. The problem that we're facing now is not worth the sacrifice later. So for example, if you just kind of want to lose weight, like you feel like you should, would feel good, but you're not willing to sacrifice like your weekend restaurants, your wine, your treats, those types of things, that is a-okay. There's absolutely no shame or judgment there, but just realize that it's not worth it for you to sacrifice those types of things. Whereas sometimes if weight loss is like the number one thing and you're just like, I got to get this weight off. I'm sick of this. And again, this can go with any other goal in life too. What you have to do is the pain right now has to be worth the sacrifice later. Um, and so I think it's important to kind of get there and just do a little bit of the mindset work of, is this actually something that I want? Is this a goal that I want to work toward? And we know that all things in life that are difficult are going to be worth some sacrifices. And so we have to sacrifice to make this goal work for sure. And I always say kind of as an addition to this, ask yourself to remember what you want most versus what you want now. Instant gratification is a definite real thing. It feels easy to just have that glass of wine or go out to happy hour with your friends and have an extra appetizer or whatever. And it's not that you can't do those things. I don't want you to feel like you can't have a glass of wine or you can't have some appetizers, but you may not be able to just go full bore and just not pay attention or employ any mindfulness. There's definitely gonna be some give and take here. And so I want you to just do some of that front work so that you can remember what you want now versus what you want most. Um, and sometimes I you know, always go back to the book or reference the book Atomic Habits by James Clear because he has some really, really great suggestions in there for how to kind of like get into this mindset of sacrifice, what you want most, instant gratification, sort of internalizing the goal and like really thinking through what you or how you want to feel, how you want to feel when you go shopping and get dressed and buy new clothes and um, shower, get in a bathing suit, like all of those things. We have to really kind of keep our eye on the prize in the long term to really keep this going. It can't really just be like a short term thing. Number two is don't get too hungry. So many people do this and I was guilty of this too, which is one of the reasons that I failed when I was trying to lose weight after my second baby. But I would, you know, feed my kids breakfast and then I wanted to go work out and I didn't want to be full when I was working out. And so then I wouldn't eat until about, you know, 10 or 11 a.m. And then I would be getting the kids back into the car with their snacks and just like have handfuls and fistfuls of goldfish because I was starving. And then I would go home and eat. And the thing is those goldfish that I was eating, you guys, like one weren't 
they were obviously no protein, they were pure carbohydrates, they weren't even super filling, they didn't really do much for me, but just I was starving and so I think a lot of people allow themselves to get too hungry into a place where like they just need food now and unfortunately most of the food now type of things like convenience and ease are pretty like processed high carbohydrates foods not always but a lot of times they are and also they're not generally meals we're generally kind of just like grazing eating on the run type of things so one of my biggest tips for people is to not get too hungry in the book intuitive eating by Evelyn Triboli she goes through a hunger scale and it goes from zero which is ravenous to 10 which is so full that you need to unbutton your pants and she suggests kind of being mindful with your hunger and eating between about a two and an eight so a two meaning that you're hungry you're ready for for food but you could potentially wait a little bit longer and an eight being that you're full you're satisfied those hunger pains are gone you probably could eat more food though and I think that that's been like really helpful in my own journey to kind of assess my hunger all the time and say like are you actually hungry is this emotional hunger um you know and if I am a four on the hunger scale when I kind of assess then I want to make sure that I know what I'm going to eat in you know 30 minutes to an hour because I know that I'll be hungry soon and so I think you know just not allowing yourself to get too hungry and making a little bit of a plan for the future can be really really helpful number three is to plan for about 90 percent consistency that's generally what I see people needing to be successful at losing about 0.5 to one pound per week on average of weight loss which is a really nice nice, realistic, and sustainable place to lose weight. So what I suggest people do is actually get out just a paper calendar on, you know, and be able to write on it and mark your days each day after at the end of the night if you were consistent so make it like a green circle and if you weren't consistent you maybe went over food or whatever just make it like a little extra and again no judgment or shame it's not to like make yourself into a bad mental place it's just to remind you okay we've had X many days of consistency, X many days where we went over in our calories, we need to be consistent now to hit that 90%. And it just is a great visual, I think, for people when they are kind of deciding if they were 90% consistent because I will tell you a lot of people when they go to weight loss it are 80% consistent, which is a lot of the time. That's about you know, five days out of every week is about 80% consistency. So if you're doing it five days out of every week, but like Saturday or and Sunday or Friday and Saturday, you're just kind of like going over, it still is gonna feel like an enormous amount of effort for you, but you're probably not gonna yield the results that you want. You're probably going to be closer to the maintenance amount of calories as an average over the week. So I always tell my patients to, just so that we know and we can say, yes, I've been 90% consistent these numbers are working for me or I'm doing what I need to be I'm losing weight or not it helps to get that objective data number four kind of goes with number two but we need to plan ahead and I'm not a meal planner I've told you guys that multiple times on this channel that I am not great at like meal prepping planning every single meals out but I do have a rough plan and I always do have things that I know that are there so for example like I have Greek yogurt in my house most of the time. I have peanut butter. I have fruit. I have um, nuts and seeds. I have grilled chicken or chicken thighs most of the time so that I know, okay, cool. I can like put that with rice and vegetables or salad or steamed vegetables or um, black beans or whatever. I know that I can make a quick meal out of that with a few of the other staples that I keep on hand. So I think that it's really important because I know that we're all busy and this time of the year is really busy. And so I think it's important to always just have some grab and go options. If you're not like the best at meal planning like me, that's fine. Get some things like Kevin's sous vide meats. They have like frozen vegetables, frozen meats, and like stir fry stuff that you can make. So keep it easy on yourself, but have a rough idea of things that you can grab. So again, we're not grabbing just processed carbohydrates because those are definitely more readily available, definitely easier to grab, definitely easier to eat on the run in most cases. So just make sure that you have some stuff that you can reach for so that you know that you have healthy options that are just as easy to reach for as some of those highly processed carbohydrate snacks.
and meals. And number five, on the times that we maybe don't succeed in our plan and we have hit a roadblock, again, no judgment or shame, use those situations as learning experiences. So look back and just, and look at it and say, okay, what actually happened here? Did I let myself get too hungry? Did I eat too many carbohydrates and was just craving carbs? I missed my protein goal of the day because protein does help us feel satisfied, satiated. It helps balance our blood sugar. It helps us not crave carbohydrates as much. So sometimes like for myself, and I know this for a lot of other people, when I don't eat high enough protein, I definitely crave more sugar and it's sort of like a downward spiral for me. So did that happen? Did you not sleep well? Sometimes when we don't sleep well, our insulin's off and we do crave more quick energy, like in the term or in the form of glucose. You may also notice like some mindset issues. Did you notice that you were buying into kind of like this all or nothing mindset where you were, you know, you ate something that maybe you thought was off plan and then you just said, screw it and ate you know, eight cookies instead of just the one, which by the way, you guys, I really want to hone this in. There are no off limits foods. And we talk about that. I did a video all about deprivation and sugar cravings, um, but there are no off limits foods. And if you consistently put yourself into this deprivation mindset, it's going to rebound eventually. You might be able to white knuckle it for a while, but you know, I have people all the time that come to me with, um, you know, not wanting to eat sugar and doing sugar detoxes and telling themselves that sugar is terrible and bad and they're addicted. And, you know, again, we can kind of like white knuckle it for a while, but in my experience with myself and so many people over the last 17 years, like that just definitely usually rebounds pretty hard and creates this like negative feedback loop inside your brain. So look at mindset issues. Like when you decided to just let it like let loose and let it go, like what was the mindset? What were the, what was the thought process? What did you tell yourself? And those are helpful cues for you that you can help kind of like start working through with the help of a nutritionist, someone like myself, a therapist, people out there can help you work through these mindset issues or surrounding food. Cause likely it's not just about food. It's just kind of coming out in the form of around nutrition. Or, you know, were you emotional? Were you stressed? Were you angry? Were you anxious? Were you tired? Were you bored? Those are all really common emotional states to be kind of jonesing around and wanting to overeat or eat snacks and sugar and, you know, overeat when we're not hungry. So I think that, you know, if you go through a situation, which we all are going to, every single one of us are going to go through a situation where we overeat, didn't stick to a plan, like made mistakes, progress over perfection. We're not trying to be perfectionists here. Like I said, for weight loss, we only need 90% of the time anyways, but you know what, if you're moving from 60% or 70% up to 80, like that's a huge jump and you should definitely be proud of yourself for that. So no striving per for perfection here, no cutting out food groups, any of those things. But when you do make mistakes or make decisions that you're not super proud of, just look back and decide what went wrong. Did you not eat enough? Some of the physical stuff, um, like sleep and not eating enough can definitely play a role. The all or nothing mindset, deprivation can play a role and emotional eating can play a role. So just look back and assess kind of like what went right with the situation, what went wrong, those types of things and you'll get a lot of introspection. I also want you to comment below with what your experience has been with kind of the all or nothing mindset. I think this is a huge time of the year for people to kind of be in this all or nothing mindset. So comment below with your experience in food and the all or nothing mindset. I've definitely been involved in that um, several times with kind of like the low carb craze. So I'm not immune to it either, but I'd love to hear from you as well. Also guys, I do have a free Facebook group called Holistic Health with Allie Dearman where you can come join us. You get access to me, you can ask questions and it's a wonderful, wonderful support group full of women who are desiring to know more about hormones, holistic health, nutrition, mindset, all the things that we chat about right here. And it's, it really is one of my favorite parts of my business. The women in there are wonderful. You can ask questions and 
They'll answer you, I'll answer you, and it's just a really positive, nice place to be on the internet. So come join us there. It's Facebook group, um, Holistic Health with Allie Dameron, and I'll leave the link in the description below. Also, if you have friends and family who could benefit from this information, share this video with them so that they don't miss out. And if you haven't hit the subscribe button yet, hit that button to be notified anytime I post new content related to women's health, hormones, and holistic health. I'll see you guys in the next one. Thank you.